Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Off The Pedal and today's episode is actually going to be talking about what is going to be replacing my F56 Mini JCW. Now in my recent video on this car I did mention that it's probably going to be going sometime in 2021 and um, yeah so I am starting to look for new stuff. I'm, I'm not in a massive rush to buy especially with the whole pandemic situation and realistically I probably won't be looking to buy anything new until at least the summer possibly into sort of the later half of the year so yeah, but um, in terms of what I'm considering then, there's a few things on the table. Um, and basically, as some of you might be able to guess, I'm looking quite predominantly at BMWs at the minute. More specifically, some rear wheel drive six cylinder BMWs from the, from the past and uh, more recent years as well, actually. So yeah, I mean, what, what is it that I, that I want from my next car? Well, I suppose to answer that question, we should probably look at the F56 Mini JCW to start with. And yeah, as I've mentioned in my other videos, I've really, really enjoyed having this car as a daily driver. It's just, it's so usable. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of that area of like usable performance. Uh, we've got 236 horsepower, of course, it's front wheel drive, which just makes it sort of like a really easy to handle amount. And it's just so much fun. It's really well set up. It's not too hard edged as far to, as far as hot hatches go. So it's quite comfortable to sort of daily and use on our terrible British roads, but you know, overall it delivers everything I would want from the car. I love the fact it's a manual gearbox. The engine sounds pretty good for a four cylinder. As I say, it's plenty of power and it handles brilliantly as well. So yeah, I mean, in the UK, insurance is the biggest factor for younger people. And the way we insure cars is a little bit complicated because essentially you insure the car and the driver as one package. So it can make getting insured on high performance cars and specifically rear wheel drive cars very difficult and very expensive. But, you know, prices are starting to come down for me now. And so I am starting to look at rear wheel drive cars. So in terms of what I want from my new car, I probably want something that can be daily driven fairly easily. I definitely don't want it to be too bad on fuel. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't mind having some maintenance costs, but ideally it's not going to be an absolute money pit and uh, something that can be stored outside as well without you know, potentially having rust issues and other things like that. So that's led me onto a few cars. Um, I was originally looking at BMW M140i's and for me, I think this is, is one of the best cars of the 2010s, certainly one of the best cars from BMW in their recent times in terms of it being an overall package. Of course, it's got that three liter B58 making, I think it's 340 horsepower in that, uh, in that state of tune. It came with the six-speed manual on the earlier models and the ZF eight-speed, but the later ones came with the ZF eight-speed only. I would, I'd kind of be open to either gearbox, to be honest. I like the idea of a six-cylinder BMW rear-wheel drive with a manual gearbox. So yeah, I'd probably, probably favor the manual gearbox, but you know, some of the later models, as I say, are automatic only. So if I did go down that route, I could end up with an auto, which isn't too much of an issue for me. And I'd probably be looking at a three door model. Um, yeah, I, I think they're a great looking car. And I, I know plenty of people have obviously used them. They're pretty well known on YouTube and yeah, uh, they get a really good write up. So that's definitely one option. But I mean, in terms of like where the car industry is going, I'm thinking, well, maybe this is a good time to get into some older things while, while you still can. And while they're still, you know, they're not too old, you know, you could keep them outside they're hopefully not going to cost a bomb to maintain. So that's kind of led me down some different routes. Um, I have thought about E36 M3s. Of course, they have been around since I think about 1995. Um, and I really like the simplicity of the E36. The E36 platform actually has grown on me a lot in probably the last 12 months or so. So I, I do think that could be a pretty good option. I'm, the engines in those, of course, are fantastic. Great sound and uh, manual gearbox as well. Loads of people use them as track tools, and I think that tells you just how good the chassis is in terms of its handling and balance. So yeah, that, that's a pretty good option. But I'm also a massive fan now of the E46 M3, and I'm like, oh, well, maybe I could go down that route. Prices on those aren't too bad. They, they are starting to creep up a bit, but you can get into some pretty nice ones for sort of 15 to 20,000 pounds in the UK. So, you know, that, that's, that's quite a good option, I suppose. But I'm a little bit concerned as far as reliability goes on those. I know it's common for sort of other M cars as well to have these problems, but specifically the, the rod bearings on those are a, a failure point, more so on the earlier cars. You know, I think from what I've read, this is due to multiple reasons. And 
often was the way with these older M engines, they're designed to rev to high RPMs. And to do that, they were trying to reduce the amount of friction, obviously, in the engine itself. And it sounds like the, the rod bearings on some of the earlier cars just basically weren't up to scratch. And yeah, it was it's a known failure point. So, you know, you, you don't really want your rod bearings to break. That's a pretty major issue. Uh, potentially catastrophic engine damage, which could get very expensive. So yeah, I'm sort of like, hmm, maybe that would be a little bit of a financial risk, but it's just such a great car, such a great engine. That S54 is just phenomenal. It's got to be one of the best M engines ever made. So I don't know, I'm sort of like, this is probably quite a good time to own one. Um, who knows what they'll be like down in the future. There might not be many around, so maybe I should just do it while there's plenty around. So yeah, and that, you know, I do think in terms of like insurance and running costs, they don't seem too bad as long as you don't have any major issues. So yeah, there's that. And of course, on top of the rod bearings as well, there's sometimes issues with the Vanos units. They have to be rebuilt. Problems with the subframes cracking. So, you know, there's a few things to consider, but to be honest, this is going to be normal for any older car, isn't it, really? You, you do have to look at what the major sort of failure items are, the cost involved with that. But, you know, there's plenty of these cars now that have had the rod bearing issues fixed. A lot of cars have had the Vanos units rebuilt. So if you get in one of those, you'd like to think that, you know, at least for the short term, you shouldn't have any sort of major outlays. But that's something to consider. And I'll probably think it over over the next sort of six months or so and see how I feel about putting some money into one of those. They are, as I say, starting to go up in value. So, I mean, financially, it does seem like it could be quite a good pros prospect as well. Not that I'm really one for investing money in cars, but, you know, sometimes makes sense for a car that's appreciating. Um, so, yeah, I mean, E36, E46 are definitely up there. I do love the idea of these kind of older BMWs, but I have thought about going even further back. Um, I, I absolutely love the E34 5 Series. If money was no object, an E34 M5 Touring would have to be up there. I just think it's a great looking thing. I absolutely love the E34 design and yeah, it's a really sort of cool 90s product from BMW. So yeah, I don't know, but then, you know, obviously E34 M5 is definitely way outside the budget I'm looking to spend. So that kind of led me down to some E34 535Is. That would be quite a cool prospect, but yeah, I guess we'll see. But basically what I'm saying is there's quite a few options on the table at the minute. I'm not really set down a particular route. Um, I'm pretty open to things, but, you know, some people might be watching thinking, oh, why is it always BMW? And to me, they just, in terms of like value for money as performance cars, nothing comes close. I mean, if I had more money, then maybe I'd be looking at a, a 981 Cayman GT4 or something like that. But it's you know the fact that you can get into an m140i for example for like twenty thousand pounds now e46 m3s are the same e36 e36 m3s are the same as well so it's just such good value for money in terms of performance cars there's plenty of parts around yeah it, it's just a really good option and i just love the way bmws look i love the the engines the drivetrains and how they feel to drive so i think that's probably going to be the route i'm going down like i say i'm going to think over over the next six months and see what I want. I'm going to do lots of research. Um, yeah, and then, then we'll eventually make a decision and you'll see the car on the channel and hopefully there'll be plenty, plenty of videos to come on that. Um, yeah, it'd be great to do all the all the usual sorts of video styles that we do. So yeah, there's plenty to look forward to. Hopefully this is going to make 2021 a better year than it's starting out. And um, I hope you'll stick around with me as well. So yeah, that's going to wrap up this uh, sort of quick episode. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.